Thousand pound pig here. This is Football Manager 2016. This is a football management simulation game, which means there are a lot of menu screens in this game. There's not a lot of action. But if you look around my channel, you will see that there are a lot more action games in this, not so much simulation. But you will notice that I edit my videos a lot, which means I like to cut a lot out and save you guys, the actual viewers, a lot of time. So that's what I'll be doing in this series. I do want to show a lot of the actual match engine in this where your team does play against another team. You can play cup matches, league matches and friendlies. So if you're a fan of football or soccer, you might like this. Or maybe you just want to see a team grow from scratch. But what makes Football Manager 2016 different from all the others is that you can create your own team. In the past you used to be able to do that in the editor but you had to download that and that was very fiddly because you had to change things one by one by one. And this is far easier. So I will do that in this video but before I can I have to make my own manager. Here he is, thousand pound pig. This is my birthday though not the year I changed that. I do live in Perth, Australia and you can see my manager on the left hand side here. It's kind of stupid. Look at this. <laughs> it's so bad. You can change your color, you can change your skin color, you can edit your face a bit. You can have a really short manager or really tall. I'll just stick to my real life height which is like six foot four. I tried to find as many pounds as I can in this video, but they won't let me go to 1,000 pounds. Eh, I did take a photo of myself. Oh, actually, a friend took a photo of me. This is my side view. It's my best view. Mm -hmm. Favorite clubs. Now, I guess I'll talk about a bit of my history in this series or football manager games. My favorite team would have to be Perth Glory. They are my local team. I've been a member with them for a few seasons now. And then my earliest football manager memory would have been in 2011, where I did take over the East Bengal Club in India. What makes that club unique is that they are part of the Salt Lake Stadium, which is a huge stadium which can fit a ton of people in. It's probably an Olympic sized stadium if there's just so many people in it. It's India! They use it for cricket and things. But that was a fun time. I focused a lot on recruiting Indian players and players from bordering countries at that time. I also managed the Indian national team at the same time. That was pretty good. I did alright. But that whole stadium trick, I don't think they allow that anymore. Like you can't really exploit that anymore. So they probably fixed that. Then in 2012, I played as Guangzhou in China. This team had a sugar daddy manager, which means that what well, it doesn't mean that your players were pimped out every night. Although I guess there is some logic in that because this team just had so much money and nobody knows where it came from. I know it came from the CEO, but I don't know how he got it, but he would bankroll the club. So you would be able to buy heaps of really good players. There was no real threat about losing money and having a bad budget for the next season and so on. There was always good sponsorship deals. It was just a very secure club. And at the time, they also had Dario Conker, which was the third most valuable player in the world at the time, right behind Ronaldo and Messi. He's not that good of a player. He is definitely Chinese level or Argentina league level because that's where he went back to, Argentina. He must have had a really good agent to get that deal, honestly. But that was pretty easy. I didn't really do too hard with him. I think I won the Asian Champions League there. That was easy mode. And then Football Manager 2013-14, 15. I not, No teams really stuck out except for maybe Telstar United. They are a Netherlands uh, Dutch team. I did pretty well with them. They are a really crap team in the bottom division of that league at the time, uh, the Dutch leagues. So I will add them to this list. So I started playing football manager with the easy mode, the sugar daddy clubs, the clubs with huge stadiums, and I've just built myself up to be a more of a lower league manager because I like building teams which are pretty crap and then building them up to compete with all the big boys such as Manchester United, Chelsea and all that. And hopefully I can do that because I'll be choosing a team down the very bottom as low as I can go in football manager 2016 called Corby. I worked it out that Corby are one of the worst clubs in the English leagues at the moment because they don't have a lot of finances. They have poor youth facilities, poor training facilities, not much money, not much squad budget and their star player looks like they are about to leave. I chose the English league because I love their whole pyramid structure they got going on where each league does have a promotion and relegation system in place and the less professional your team is the more focused they are on playing teams who are near them rather than just on the other side of the country which would cost a lot of money in transport obviously. The Vanarama North is the 6th tier, so I have 4 divisions to climb up to get into the top league with United, Chelsea, Arsenal and all that. Because I'm fine with that, I want to build this team up to be world beaters. And I'm starting from scratch. So this is club management. This is not just player management for a season or trying to hold onto a title. The challenge is building an actual club. 
this club was linked to Northampton. They had a deal going on with them, but I'm going to delete that because I don't want any deals here. I don't want any kind of history. I'm starting from scratch. And all the other stuff, I'll just leave that because it makes sense based on what league it is. I do want to show you this customization because this is actually really crap. Look at this. You can change the color of your outfit, but that's just your shirt. Your team has shorts and shoes and logos, and you can't really tell what color they are or icons and text. Same with the goalkeeper outfits. You can barely... S Same with the goalkeeper outfits. You can't see it. It's really bad. I really hope they change this in a patch or they update this and definitely have a better version of this in the next game because this is cringeworthy. This is terrible. My team will be sticking with those pink colors because I find it a very unique color compared to all the other teams in the leagues. And it's just a bit of fun beating the other teams while wearing pink. I will be naming the team Gracetown because it just sounds like a very English league or a very English town to me. I'll base them in um, a random place in England, York. Uh, Yorkshire should be fine. The stadium name will be Graceland. I think that's an Elvis thing. I'm not too sure. It doesn't really matter. But Graceland sounds fine for a stadium. And for the nicknames, I'll just call them Pigs at the moment. I don't really have any idea. I, I want... This team is starting from scratch, so hopefully they can develop something more of a nickname than... Now, this is my team. I can add any player I want in this team. I could have Ronaldo and Messi in this team, but the squad budget wouldn't really allow that. Like, Messi and Ronaldo just by themselves, they are far more than any of these players. It's insane. I did do some research on the Corby FC site. I did found Yeboah and May. They are both two youngsters. So I put them both in the team. I'm not sure which is more up to date, the Corby FC site or Football Manager 2016. I would say the Corby FC is much more trustworthy than this game because it's always been like that in the past. So I put those two in the team and I hope they can help in a few seasons. Now this is the main menu screen where you do see a lot of things happening at, at the moment. First off, I just a huge complaint is that look down the bottom right, you can see the team's logo. It's that nice kind of matte style of pink while everywhere else it's a freaking eye-burning pop pink it's kind of crap and white on that is really bad i wish i could change the colors but i'm not able to now now this is a media screen where the media can talk to me the manager and ask me how i'm going to be running the club i didn't intend to show this a lot in the future but i figure it's a good idea for this first episode just so you can see how i intend to manage the club do you feel the expectations asked of you this season have been fair and realistic i'm expected to finish 17th so just avoid relegation or, or get relegation i'm not too sure uh, if the club is to really progress towards the higher reaches of the game, everybody has to be ambitious and aim hard. That's what we're doing at the moment. I can choose to be calm, assertive, cautious, passionate. I'll be assertive. Yeah. What made you take this job? I'm going to be cautious here and I say that I feel as if this is the right club for me at this stage of my career because it's the very first stage. It's the very first step on the ladder, I guess, uh, of my career. Hopefully my appointment will have a mutually beneficial impact on all parties. I just don't really know what to say here, so I'll just be cautious here. While some managers are famous for their hands-on approach, others maintain a more reserved manner with their players. How do you see your management style? Now, I trust a lot of my staff for this. I tend to do a lot of automation in this game because I I just don't have the patience for a lot of the game. I do try and be very tactical and focus on players and things every now and then, but I, I tend to trust my coaching staff a lot. So I guess I think things work best when players feel valued as people as well as footballers. That is very important. I think it makes more sense than all these others. So I'll just be assertive there. And it is often said that different managers favour different competitions. Will you be concentrating primarily on getting good results in the Venerama North? I think the league is probably the most important thing. That is what the fans want. It has to be my priority. So I will be, uh, I'll be passionate. I trust you fans. On the off chance that any agents read your comments today, is there a particular area of the squad which you are looking to strengthen in the near future? I don't really know. I think maybe attack, that might be good for, well, the fans might like the attack. So um, I'm going to be cautious and say the attack, even though I might get in trouble for saying that the strikers might get upset about that, whatever. And this is why I said it, because our striker, I think this is a striker, Callum, his name is... Uh, Callum Ball, he wants to leave and join another club. I want to keep him here, but if I can't, that's why I said I would like to be strengthening the striker options we have. So ideally, I, w I would like to keep Callum around, but I know that may not be possible. I will be uh, assertive. I'm confident of that. Cool. Done. Now that that's over with, I'll give you a quick tour of this screen. Tabs are up here. Click, 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 click. There is a search box up here. I could just type in any player's name. Um, What's the name? Ronaldo. Yeah, see, 
It comes up with a ton of different names from Brazil. Well, most of them are from Brazil, I bet. This is a squad I'll be playing with. I can organize it like age, value, or anything like that. If you click on any of them, you can see their stats. You can see that they are green and white. The higher the color is, the higher, well, the more it stands out. So I think it's white, green, and then orange, red. So just look out for those colors when you do see the numbers. On each of these players, I can sort out contracts, their transfers. I can talk to each player individually, give them a bit of encouragement if they are feeling down, or maybe just find them if they miss training. There is a reserves team and a youth team that is going to be very important for this club because as I said, I do want to grow my players up from the very bottom. I'm going to have to focus a lot on that, but I'll start that in a future episode. This game is known for its tactics. I can click and drag players just to fit anywhere on the screen there. See, so it seems to make sense like that. It's pretty cool. Team report, usually I have an assist manager to help with this, but in, for this version, I don't. I don't know what happened to the assist manager. I don't know what happened to any of the staff members. I have no one. Like, I gotta find a physio, a scout, a director of football, an assistant manager, and maybe a coach if I even have the right budget for it. This is what I think makes Corby more challenging than a lot of the other lower league teams, which I could have taken over. So I'm gonna place an advert for some of those. Hopefully some people will apply to that because I really need some as soon as possible. Training is something I do put a lot of focus on, which is why I really need an assistant manager and coach to help with that. Just this system you see here, I can take a lot of stars out and that will have training stronger in a different area. That's why other staff members are so important because you can balance that load out a lot more and the players benefit from that. Scouting, that's not important yet because I don't have any scouts. Finances, I'm going to stay away from that because it's very confusing, honestly. <laughs> and team, just a general overview of the team. What you what you see is what you get, really. It's, this is information. So this has been a lot about what's new in Football Manager 2016, how I can create a team in it and what the plan is for the future. In the next video, I'll start some matches. I'll show all the friendlies and some pre-season training and maybe I can try and find some staff members. I will try and keep a hold of our star striker and we'll see what happens. But if you got any recommendations for this series, uh, any type of editing, the music which you hear, then let me know. And what I would like to see is some likes because I don't make a video like this very often. So if you press that like button, then that will let me know that you do want to see more in the future and I'll do that. So thanks for watching and I hope you hang around for the next one.